All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this live broadcast. Welcome, welcome, Lisha. Thank you so much. Lisha has so kindly accepted to do this. I'm so appreciative of anyone who says yes, and Deborah, especially at short notice. And I know everyone's busy. So before we get started or even say anything, I'm just going to pop in very quickly to our Facebook group to make sure that this is showing in our Facebook group for the ladies. So just bear with me. How are you, Alicia? I am very well. Thank you so much for inviting me. Um, I'm actually quite excited. I did get a notification pop up to say that um, the group had gone live. So right, that, okay. in my mind, hopefully that means that we, we're actually yes. you know, live in the group. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Yeah. We, yes, 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 that's fine. Perfect. Okay, so I can see us in the group as well. All right, okay then. So, Leisha, tell me, um, of course, the, 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 the purpose of this live today is to really just break it down. Yeah. Let me, let me see if we've got something. Hold on, hold on, let me see. That's it. Okay, we're sorted, we're sorted. Oh, technology. Those gremlins, those gremlins, they're always in there. Oh, so as I was saying, anyway, um, Lisha is a friend and she's a, she's a businesswoman. She's so many things, but she'll tell us all about it today. But the reason why I asked her to come in or the reason why I asked you to come in is because I realized that talking to the women about finance, save, invest, save, invest, but what about if they don't have it? What if they don't have enough to say? I mean, it's all well and good telling people to put something away, but you can't ask people to put something away that they don't have. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, they don't have enough of it. But I know there are other ways of us making some extra income. So over to you, Leisha. What is it that brought you to a point where you are at now that makes you think, hey, you want to make some extra money? Can you still hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, right, okay. Many moons ago, I was in a bad relationship. Um, I got out of the relationship after quite a, a struggle, I would say. Mm. Um, while in the relationship, I accrued an awful lot of debt, um, and things that were on finance, for example, signing lots of bits of paper, but a lot of it attached to credit and money, so lots of borrowing to keep this person happy for what yeah um once i actually got out of the relationship i realized that it was a lot of debt <laughs> um i was only 25 at the time and i was just under a hundred thousand pounds in debt um i didn't know what to do i'll be honest i didn't know what to do at that stage um so I worked and I worked and I worked and I worked and I just did multiple jobs and I called them mm. jobs because they kept me just over broke. Mm. I never earned enough per hour or per year to actually pay off the debt in a considerable yeah. or, you know, live a comfortable lifestyle. That means no holidays and all those sorts of things. Oh, you know, no gifts for family, no going out, you know, very, very strict. Um, I ended up declaring bankruptcy, which was the last thing that I wanted to do. Yeah. So, I got it down from 100,000 and I got it down to 30,000. So I paid off 60 myself just by working. Really? I last, yeah, I got to that last 30 and I just didn't have it in me anymore. Uh, you know, when you're just, I was just tired. Exhausting. Um, yeah, I then became very ill um, during that process as well. Mm. And then it made me reassess my income. It made me reassess my life. So yeah. I did have a decent pension um, for those people who are in the UK or, you know, whereabouts you are, you know, that investment that you put aside for yourself as you when you get older. I never yeah. invested into my future life or, you know, my elderly years in, in that yeah. respect. And it, then, that, then I panicked and I mm. thought, well, what can I do now to kind of build up that kind of credit that collateral a buffer zone for when i'm older an income for perhaps when my body can't do as much in yeah. to... and then that's when my cousin came along at the time and introduced me to um, network marketing and mm. an online business that i can mm. do um, mm. choose 
hours, you know, again, do it online. So I didn't have to do, you know, expenditure in regards to traveling and having products mm. around me and all sorts. So I did a lot of um, training at first, self-development, joined um, a free registration online business. Um, no mm. funds had to exchange. And then yeah. I was able to build up my business knowledge in my own time. Um, nobody pressured me about how many hours I had to put in or, you know, how much money I could make. You know, for yeah. years I capped by my annual salary, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Is that all I'm actually really worth? You know, and doing all of this work, all of these hours and then looking at the numbers at the end of the year and thinking the tax man's doing really well off of me to a yeah. certain extent. So rather than giving my employer all of my energy and all of my power and watching mm. my employer go away on holiday and watching my employer buy new cars and a bigger house and their children go into private school I decided that I needed to do something for myself mm. so with all of my you know experiences be them good and bad I realized that there was a lot of hours that I spent um, like watching tv or just skimming through the socials um, chatting with friends but not actually doing anything productive yeah. it wasn't bringing in an income so once I realized that I could do network marketing and basically that means networking and talking with people such as yourself um, yeah. having the brain to hit the friend button and having a conversation with the individual at the end of that and saying hey my name's Leisha and I've got this brand or this product and I do this and I do that and would you be interested in you know switching a product with me or trying a sample or doing yeah. this and you slowly begin to build up your confidence and your network you know mm. in that respect. and then people naturally they either like you or they don't like you yeah one or another but then you find out more about the individual that you're speaking to that you know you've got a business background you work with children I'm like perfect I'm a mentor I can utilize you know so we we sort to learn about each other as we were yeah. going along and that's what my first stream of income basically um, was was all about. It was learning about business, the love of perfume, the love of beauty products, and then being able to offer that same experience, that same learning to others. So not yeah. just women, but to men as well, not just in the UK, but internationally. Mm. And that's the beauty of the business and the company that I'm affiliated with. Mm. Um, it is extendable. We've got great partners in Africa on the continent, Ghana, Nigeria. Um, we've got uh, an Arab like Emirates side of yeah. things in, in yeah. the branch of Asia. So we're very much an international business um, yeah. as well. And that's, the, you know, again, it's starting from nothing. And I've seen people literally start with nothing from nothing and build great empires for themselves and a legacy for their family, which is important. Yeah. You know, being, teach your family about business being able to leave something for them and yeah I think that's that's my main drive that's my main why you know everybody says well why do you work so many hours why do you do what you do and it is about being able to you know provide for my nieces and nephews and help them go to university or help them buy their first house or whatever mm -hmm. it is take away some of that strain that I felt that I had I know. Um, my parents weren't able to sort of fund my habits you know or fund the things that or I even do. helping to get you up, or even help to get you out of debt as well they weren't yeah. able to help get you out of debt you know when you find yourself in debt and to avoid being bankrupt because it's not easy being made bankrupt because there's still the aftermath of that that you know so and that, um that's where my group bouncing back on facebook yeah. first from it was um, sort of bouncing back from bankruptcy. How does yeah. an individual rebuild their life um, yeah. from being as low on the credit scale, homelessness, you know, all the things I'd been through, you know, and just not having anything really mm -hmm. and then starting from the beginning and just showing people that, you know, I still work part time. I still do my community stuff. I still do a lot of things, but a lot more time is dedicated to myself and my business development. Yeah. And reaching out to people and saying look if I can do it you can do, can it. do it at your own pace you know not not anybody sort of pressuring you or pushing you into anything it's, it's, so it's me, a choice yeah let, sorry it's about in let me ask you this then of course you would have come across people who would say well Leisha you know that's 
you know, um, it's just not me. I'm just not. I'm sure you hear it all the time. Not very good. You know, with selling, I don't think any one of us is good with selling, to be quite honest. You know, I mean, I know when I look at my business right now, which I own and run, I'm the boss of my own business. Sometimes when I have to sell to people, I feel so funny. I feel odd, but I know I have to do it. Now, for those people who just are so introverted and just find it extremely difficult to do, what are the other things that in the time that you have tried to bounce back that you have then picked up on along the way? And how or why did you pick those other things up to bring in an income for you? Yeah, well, in all honesty, I um, started, like I said, I started to look at where my money was going more so than selling. That was how I changed my thought processes. So I was then kind of questioning the people, my clients or my customers as to were you happy paying for X amount of money for this product? And if someone could offer you an alternative that was a lot more affordable, would you be interested? So what I then did is turn the conversation around. So it wasn't about selling the product. It was about helping someone save money. And that's a conversation I found a lot easier to have. Um, and that's when people will go, so if you do perfume, what else can I save money on? Can I save money on makeup? Can I save money on, and you know, so the list of mm. things that we started to question where they could save money was then coming in rather than me having to force it out to anyone. Mm -hmm. mm. So it's about showing people how I benefited but how they could benefit doing the same thing. Mm. So it wasn't about me kind of taking money from them. It was about me educating them about, I shop online, I have a web shop, I accrue commission, I do this for myself. And this is something that you can sign up and do for yourself. So you educate people just how to shop differently. And like yeah. an alternative. So it takes away the selling. Yeah. People that are curious. And that's what it is. I like that little bit of intrigue. So they like the products and it's like, well, if you're at home and you're a mum or if you're at home and you're part time or if you don't like your job, which is what my problem was, or you feel like your job isn't enough for you, you're yeah. not getting anything back. That's what made me start off as a side hustle is what I called it. My little yeah. part time perfume side hustle. You know, yeah. I go out on the weekends with my little case and go and see my friends and family. You know, if I bumped into somebody in the street and they were friendly, I'd go, oh, you know, has a little leaflet. So it kind of just took the pressure away. It became a game to myself, a bit of a, a challenge, for want of mm. a better word. Yeah. So maybe connect with one new person, um, connect with five new people, connect with 10 new people. So as your confidence grows, you find the more people you speak to is the less daunting it becomes. It's yeah. always just that first chord or that first yeah. interaction that's the difficult one yeah I, I think also different. the way you yeah. said it i think the way you said it as well is so so much different from people's uh what they've experienced or heard and it's i'm glad you're saying it because i think when it comes to that word network marketing people get so afraid and they are put off by it and blah you know i mean you, you've spoken to me about it and although I don't wear perfume as such anymore I, I wear a different type I, I my skin's just I don't know what it is at this age my skin's just changed suddenly but um but you've spoken to me about it and um people get scared of speaking and the way you've broken it down is you need to work it to your advantage and change the the narrative I guess or the way to say it. it's not always the way you were taught yes. um, of course the, the things that you learned whilst you were training but you might just something might just tweak or the penny might just drop right and you think yes. well that tactic didn't work let me try something else right yeah and I definitely struggled for the first year you know having never been in business never been in network marketing not having much of a social network you know only having a small circle of friends and I panicked a little bit I was like I don't know anybody you know, but what I remembered is, is that I might not only know 10 people, but those 10 people, if they know 10 people, and then those 10 people know 10 people, I've now reached nearly a thousand people only by knowing 10 people. Yeah. And that's how I learned to basically, as you say, network mm. and work your market. 
to a certain extent. So it's about the recommendation. So just because you don't like perfume, it doesn't mean that your daughter or your sister or That's your right. cousin or your uncle, That's right. so you might not buy it for yourself, but That's you might right. want to buy it for a gift for somebody yeah. else. Again, That's it's right. just about me using different language and being confident about my products, being yeah. confident about the, my target audience, if that makes sense. Not to target yeah. people, but there's a certain category of women or men that will gravitate towards me naturally. Yeah. So it will yeah. open up the conversation easier. Um, my business yeah. partners, some of them have children, so they find it easier to talk with to single mums. You know, some of them are like my mum's age who will come in towards retirement, but are full of life and they mm -hmm. don't want to stop working, but they don't want to work for somebody else. They don't want that yeah. pressure. On them. So my mum now looks at it as an opportunity to just connect with her friends, have a pamper party. Um, she does popcorn and movie night and she brings out the, you know, the foot spas and the hand creams and her friends just sit there and just, and it's a self-love journey. Yeah. So there's so many ways that people can incorporate this business into their actual life and then offer that same sort of feeling to somebody else. Yeah. So, you know, even my gym fanatics, and they all look, sorry, I'll get rid of That's that. Right. So, all right. the gym genetics, you know, they're out there with the muscles and all of that lot. And I'm like, yeah, so what about your shower gels and your deodorant, <laughs> and, you know, your foot scrubs and all of this sort? So there's always something that people will use. Um, yeah. Cleaning products, for example, as well. So a lot of people go, oh, I didn't know they did cleaning products. And then they do coffee and tea. So the range is huge. So it gave me this real advantage is the way that I see it. They can yeah. use more products to promote which means I can speak to more people. I speak to salons, coffee shops, restaurants, hotels, um, tanning salons, nail shops, you name it. Like yeah. everyone. everyone. Everybody. So I don't have to also have to deal with people. I can now go to companies yeah. and I can do presentations in the evening. I can give them samples of teas and coffees and, you know, so I can grow my business differently by knowing yeah. where to go. And that took a while for me to actually learn. But mm. now my coach and my training partner and my mentors, they fire and stuff at me all the time. They give me challenges now. Go and speak to 10 salons today. You know how to do it. Go and find the lady who does the perms or, you know, whatever. They, but that's kind of where my brain is at now. I now explain to people, go to your local bar, go to your local cafe, go to your local gym, go to mm. where the people are. And then you know what to offer those people yeah i like yeah. that i like yeah. that are, are there anything any other things in addition to the uh the network marketing that you do that also um is generating income for you or is likely to generate income for your stuff that's in the pipeline yeah so basically um i actually invest in gold so right. i buy um, gold in very small increments in what yeah. you can afford and they send it to me in the post and that little bit of gold is worth what it's worth on the stock market so the stock market goes up and down fluctuates but as time goes on I will always have my bundle of gold nobody can take that away um, each year you also get a payout from this particular company as a thank you so you kind of get like a dividend or a share of the business mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, year so every year in July um, I get a payout I don't always know what it's going to be but it's very yes. much welcomed <laughs> yeah. in that respect but then I can reinvest it again that's right to gold or reinvest it into my food business so my food business grew this year um, with everything that was going on I moved into a new area I realized there wasn't any African or Caribbean food um, in regards to just options and I thought well I know how to cook I can go and get a few certificates and start a little business and that's exactly what i did so i bought some food i did a little bit of advertising people ordered and now i sell food on the weekends as well so again you know zero cost <laughs> all it Bravo. was a few, yeah a few containers from the pound shop you know the metal ones some ingredients cook it sell it make a profit reinvest yeah. that money back into the business and that's what i've been doing since february so investing in gold is like a long-term yeah. kind of you know, affiliated thing, something that will happen in the background. The food business is more hands-on, but again, it's something we can all do. Um, you don't need a qualification. You don't really need certificates. You don't need a license. You, there's so many things you don't need um, when people think of business. They, people yeah. think of things you do need, a business plan, yeah. a budget. That I didn't do any of that. 
I don't have advertising costs. I've only just started to print flyers. It's all word of mouth. It's all done via social media. So again, learning how to use your socials is a big thing in regards to an income um, that all the platforms are used slightly differently. So I've done a lot of homework about Facebook, done a lot of homework about Instagram and how to reach people. It's about that interaction, that engagement. So those are the two things that I do mainly is gold and food. Then I do, like I said, my perfumes. But in regards to additional ways of bringing an income, you can be a consultant. You can be a mentor. If you have a skill, for example, I sew for fun. Somebody saw something that I sewed and then they said, can you make me one of those? <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm now a seamstress. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, if these are things, these are skills that I discovered during this kind of social isolation lockdown window. I knew I had them, but this gave yeah. me the time to kind of dig into what I was good at. Um, so you, so there's sewing, which I can I can do. I've started to make tablecloths and napkins and napkin rings because I go do food. So it yeah. goes very well with my food brand. I make aprons and oven mitts and things like that. Again, connected to my food industry. You know, so I've started to link all the things that I've around, got around that's I've, around yeah that's around yeah. that thing you do that's right the cleaning products I can clean my kitchen wash my clothes they're from the FM business so everything is intertwined everything's connected um yeah. in regards to, um I suggest I'm looking at writing my own book at the moment so you're that's the first I haven't really announced that anywhere to be honest with you but again it's an income stream mm. okay. You can do online webinars where you show people how to do maybe hair plaiting or to make wigs or how to paint nails. All of these things, online tutorials and then ask for donations so people can help you buy more materials. Mm. Or if you need to print a workbook, ask for a donation so they can print something off of your website. Um, mm. Again, having a platform, i.e. a website with just a few links of the things that you do that take people to other places. Yeah. Um, I'm currently doing YouTube videos. Um, if you get up to a thousand subscribers, YouTube rewards you with a monetary thank you, um, a very small percentage. Um, also podcasts. If you get sponsorship for doing podcasts um, where you affiliate yourself with a brand, you get a percentage of the income. Mm. Um, if you model clothing for a website, I won't name any of them, but you've got your boohoos and your your next and all your different online marketing, social, pla you know, your online clothing. Yeah. You write to them and say, well, I'm a plus size or I'm a slim side. I wear your clothes all the time. Stick some pictures of me on your website. So yeah. then you're modeling, you're helping their campaign you then get a residual income from that. Yeah. So these are all the things that we do day to day shopping, but we don't think, how can I make money back from that customer that, you know, that company, yeah. you know? So it's about just being really clever about what you will represent, what brand you'll wear. If you're going to wear the yeah. same brand all the time, phone them and say, yo, Mr. That's Andy, right. That's your clothes for the 20 years. Send me some free trainers, man. Exactly, exactly. Are you still within the care industry? I got out of it because it was actually killing me. I, yeah, I, I could I, tell. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could tell. It, it was, you know, the, and I encouraged a lot of people in the care industry to do the business that I was in, the beauty products, the pamper parties, have supplement your income. You know, right. care, and the carers, they all need care. They all need love. They all want to feel good, smell good, look mm -hmm. good. So it's perfect sort of industry for people who are, you know, in that, you know, that work of life. And they can also treat their residents, you mm -hmm. know, in that them pampering sessions and foot rubs and look after the residents mm -hmm. with the same. So there's a great network of people within the care industry. So if you're thinking, oh, I don't know anybody, speak to your colleagues. And I've mm -hmm. worked in really large establishments with lots and lots of people. And I said, oh, once a month, can I bring like a little display table and have mm -hmm. it in the corner for people to see what I do as a side? Yeah, person? yeah. You know, that sort of thing. So don't be frightened to ask. That's women. right, because you used to have that in offices even where people bring in, um, uh, they'll have a company who comes and drops off books, books. and uh yeah, I remember the book, the book club or the, the book, book club, club and there's people yeah. like Avon, those sorts of yeah. things. Yeah. So FM yeah. is very similar to Avon or Mary Kay. Um, yeah. so what, you know, I want to compare it in, in that yeah. sense. The reason why I chose this particular company to sign up with is because, like I said, it was free. They didn't demand that I buy their products and like they don't auto ship. They don't send me anything and I have yeah. to subscribe to these monthly payments. No, 
there is no outlay at all. The choice was entirely mine. Yes. How much I want to spend, when I want to spend, if I want to spend at all. And if I wanted to grow my business and invite other people into the business, I have that option as well. So that's yeah. why it was a good company for me. It, it's interesting you said that you're not in the care business anymore. And if you hadn't had these things that you're doing, you wouldn't have been able to leave the care business. So just as a closing sort of discussion, Leisha, uh, what would you say to other women um, listening to this in terms of what's happening now where we are in this pandemic with the COVID-19? A lot of people were affected financially. What is it you're going to? What 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 is it that you, you you could say to the ladies in terms of having another source of income in relation to a pandemic? Yeah, ever I mean, so we saw what happened. There was no food in the shops. Okay, so you know people turned to online shopping. Hmm. That's my answer. That's what saved me during this pandemic. I didn't have to hold any stock. I didn't have to go anywhere. My customers can go online and order what they want from the safety of their home. And a lot of people said, oh, but people aren't spending. They did. They, they are. did. They did. Yes. They're, they're bored. They've got money coming in. They've got 80% of their income coming in. Yeah. And, and a lot of it doesn't have to go out anymore, just in regards to the travel costs. That's um, right send in the children to school yes i know we use more gas electricity we ate yeah. more food Risk, but there was still a disposable income that yeah. a lot of people decided well i'm going to get the credit card out then and people just started shopping and shopping and shopping so that is what it is i say make sure that you have an online presence an online business because therefore people don't have to come to you the individual and you can reach anybody globally if you have an online business yeah not just the country not just your town not yes. just your city not just your village online is global mm. international that means if you speak to someone in australia and they like your products they can go onto your shop and they can order yeah, yeah. you don't need to go to australia to sell to the people okay so make sure you have an online presence everything at the moment is targeted towards technology create something that you can utilize online a friend of mine did face-to-face -face workshops so yeah. when this social isolation distancing happened her workshop stopped because she did face-to-face -face. she mm -hmm. moved all of her client base online still doing face-to-face -face, still doing her workshops just not in each other's physical presence yeah, yeah. about working outside those um so what should we call them those constraints sometimes yeah. and thinking outside the box and if you yeah. really what you'll do people will follow you wherever you go. So if mm. I jumped on Facebook and I just said, right, I'm not using Facebook anymore, I'm just going to use Instagram, my people would would follow me yes. over yeah. because they, they liked it. So just keep that presence, keep that touch with yeah. people. Yeah. Thank you, Leisha. That is it. Oh, that welcome. is it. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being in the house. It's been amazing. I know that you have so much to say. Thank you so much. Bless you. Yeah. And if you've got any questions or if you just want an informal chat, Please come via Deborah, who will forward your messages onto myself, or please come direct to myself. That's and right. That's just right. Have a really informal chat and discussion. That's right. Look for her. She's on Facebook and all of that, you know. So, yeah. I'll see you soon. Take care, my love. Thank you, yeah. darling. Yeah. Have a good weekend. You too. <laughs> all right. So, that is it. So, I shall come um, probably tomorrow or maybe sometime next week and talk to us all about um, what I do for extra sources of income. So for Alicia, her main extra source of income is doing network marketing with FM, which is really, really good at. You can see how relaxed it was, even though we have all these notions of, you know, our network marketing being scary. But she also talked about other things like the food business, like the sewing, like making things. Uh, what else did she talk about? She talked about, um, oh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, gold, buying small amounts of gold. Um, what else did she talk about? So she talked about about four, four or five main things, yeah? So hopefully you find it really, really useful. And there's a common theme running through all of these. Food is one of those things, things that are quite easy to do. 
um, removing this thought that you have to register this and you have to register that, but just start. Look at the skills you have. What are you good at? If you are home and you can cook and you're a woman and you cook really good food, your husband likes it, and you don't have that extra source of income, create that extra source of income. Even if it only means you're going to use that source of income for, you know, maybe buying your outfit for the weekend to go or, or to go out to an event, or maybe it's just to um, cover the cost of getting your nails done at the at the you know nail bar or something like that. Okay, so thank you so much for joining. That wraps up all of our ladies. I have one more, but it won't be today. I'm still trying to um, get her to come on at some point in the future. Thank you so much. I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.